Our paper in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology is a clinical sample of 222 children in Michigan who all have cerebral palsy. In this study, we asked their mothers to use the Gross Motor Function Classification System, the GMFCS, to classify their mobility on one to five levels their ability to handle objects by classifying their manual ability classification system level, the max, and their functional communication by classifying one of five levels for the communication function classification system, the GMSCS. Now what is already known about that is that parents can describe how children are currently functioning in their mobility with the GMFCS, when handling objects with the MAC, and when communicating with the CFCS. What's new from this paper is that now we can compare their GMFCS and their MACs and their CFCS levels, one being most functional to five being least functional. What we found is that knowing one of these functional classification levels did not predict the other classification levels. So just because a child was classified with low, lower functioning mobility, such as getting a GMFCS level 5, that child did not always have a MAX level 5 and a CFCS level 5. So again, it shows the importance of considering each of these areas of function separately. We also talked about the need to consider uh, participation, and that in some cases, mobility may be the more important predictor of participation. For example, things involving walking or other kinds of movement. If the participation involves handling objects, manipulating objects, then the max level may be more predictive of, of participation. And if it's about some areas of communication to participate, so communicating at school or in the community, then the CFCS level may be more predictive. We hope that this paper will uh, lead to more research into how functional abilities affect the treatment and eventual participation outcomes for children with cerebral palsy.